At the foot of Mount Kenya and at the eastern point of the Laikipia Plateau lies the Maasai land known as Liwa. Liwa in Maasai means men. David and Lekerio cross this land every day. They are the guardians of this protected area, a sanctuary for the rhinoceros. For the Maasai, life is a struggle to overcome fear. That is why these men are able to face all the dangers found in this area. This buffalo died of hunger and thirst, like hundreds of animals before him. For David and Lekerio, the three-year drought which struck Liwa was due to the anger of their god, Inkal, who influences the sun, the moon, the stars, the lightning, and the rain. During the drought, David and Lake Kerio, like the other Liwa guardians, applied the strict rule, feed the rhinoceroses first. Kenya, like all of Africa, cannot take the chance of losing them. Liwa is a 16,000 hectare enclosure. Only one opening 30 meters wide enables animals to come and go. The rhinos, however, are not allowed out. It's too dangerous for them outside. The two guardians checked that the little stone wall used to stop the animals wasn't damaged when the rain finally began to fall two weeks ago. David has found a rhino that died of old age. It's a sad moment for the guardian. Ian, the owner of the land, arrives to take stock of the situation and to take the animal's horn before it falls into the hands of poachers. Ian's father has transformed his ranch into a rhino sanctuary to save the already falling number of individuals and provide them with freedom and protection. He asked the Maasai to undertake this delicate mission knowing that only the men from around here are capable of facing the danger of such an environment. Ten years ago, a security professional came to Liwa. He trained and armed the Maasai guardians and organized a veritable anti-poacher battalion. When David and his colleagues patrol the bush, they camp out every two evenings in a different site so as not to be spotted by illegal traffickers who will stop at nothing to take back a rhino's horn with them. These horns are said to have medicinal and aphrodisiac qualities and sell for a fortune on the Asian market. Before working at Liwa, David saw the rhinoceros as a threat to the food supply of the village's cows and goats. But times have changed, and David is now aware that without the Maasai's protection, this prehistoric animal would disappear. This one-year-old rhino was abandoned by its mother, and David bottle feeds it. Now that the animal is accustomed to humans, David can no longer release it into the savanna, it wouldn't survive there, since it doesn't know how to defend itself against another rhino. Like this young male, for example, Makora, who was fighting as recently as the previous night. Makora is a white rhino. The word white is a deformation of the Afrikaner word vite, meaning wide, characterizing the width of the animal's square mouth. Makora was injured by a horn under his left eye and flies are already flocking around the wound. The infection is spreading, and the men have to intervene as quickly as possible. To treat Makora, Ian has to put him to sleep. He bases the amount of anesthetic on the age and weight of the animal. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good turn, right? Makora is very resistant and even the second dart is insufficient. Tying a rope to the rhino's hind foot is the only way to get him on the ground. David's older brother handles this end of the job. Of all the Maasai working at Liwa, he is the most experienced in this sort of activity. Ian applies an antiseptic to stop the infection. And David pours water on the animal to prevent dehydration. A few seconds later, after administering a product which reverses the effects of the anesthetic, Makora is conscious once again and slowly regains his strength. Like other guardians, David and Lecario live in villages around the reserve. Every two months, they go back home and buy cattle with their salaries. David's father, the village chief, welcomes them back. The women are the guardians of the village, and David's mother is their representative. When there's a problem, she discusses it with the men. As soon as he returns home, David quickly takes off his uniform. There are several men here with the same profession, and after being away for weeks at a time, they quickly regain their place in the village. For the Maasai, Liwa is a haven of peace, and those who work there deserve attention and respect. David is glad to see his family, of course, 
but he's especially anxious to rejoin the group of young warriors with whom he was raised. These young men are called Ilmorans, and they are as important to David as his family. While they are still adolescents, Maasai boys must take their animals into the bush alone to graze. David went through this initiation stage and has some terrifying memories of it, including lions which stalked around the cattle, which he had to protect at all cost. The Maasai place the responsibility for the cattle with the men, who are the owners of the meat. <laughs> To celebrate his son's return, David's father offers a goat to the young warriors. According to tradition, the goat must be purified with the juice preserved in a gourd, and then taken outside the village, far from everyone, to be sacrificed. As they all share the meat, David talks about his experiences at Liwa. Thanks to him, his friends also realize that times have changed and that protecting wildlife helps them to preserve their ancestral way of life. If the savanna doesn't remain the same, they will be forced to leave it for the poor suburbs of big cities. Although the meat belongs to the men, the milk is for the women. Their job is to milk the animals and to take care of the gourds from which it is drunk. It's forbidden to mix milk with meat in the village, and the men remain separate from the women. A Maasai legend says that in the beginning, men and women formed two different tribes. This separation is present today, and each tribe depends on the other for either milk or meat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
After a week at home, David puts on his uniform once again. He adjusts quickly to his two very different ways of life and cannot decide which he prefers. Whether it's his village or Liwa, he always goes back to it with great pleasure. David and Lecario's present mission is to locate an elephant wearing a tracker or radio transmitter. When the two men are on elephant territory, they're always very careful. Elephants are extremely rapid animals. Many Maasai stories talk about tragic accidents with this animal. Attracted by the peaceful atmosphere of Liwa, herds of elephants entered the reserve during the recent rains. 200 of them live there now. There are too many of them for such a small space, especially considering how much they eat. Food problems are bound to arise very soon. The reason why the reserve has equipped some animals with trackers is in order to locate them and better understand their migratory behavior. Ian exchanges information with other Kenyan reserves, since the elephant, like the rhinoceros, is a prime target for poachers. Milianda is a rhino that David knows well. He has boundless energy, and when Rita, the female, is ready to be fertilized, he is never far away. This time, however, David notices something strange in his behavior. Liwa guardians must also observe animals to see if they are in need of treatment. And David's fears are well-founded. Milianda's left eye has been attacked by ticks. The rains bring with them a number of problems, notably the return of blood-sucking parasites. Rhinos have very poor vision because of the way their eyes are positioned. They are nevertheless indispensable. Their highly developed hearing and sense of smell are not enough to assure their survival. A blind rhino is a potentially dead animal. <laughs> Soon after David's call, the usual capture procedure is launched. Milianda is quickly located by plane. Once captured and put to sleep, time is again a major factor. For a rhino, being anesthetized is a cause of great distress. In order to shorten the trauma as much as possible, Ian gives him a very weak dose, which will not last very long.
In two weeks, two of the 39 rhinos living at Liwa have had eye problems. This is considered a high percentage. There must be others, and vigilance is essential. David and Le Carrio watch Milionda for quite a while. They're worried. The rhino, with his head lowered, hasn't moved. Was there a problem with the anesthetic? Was the dose too strong for him? His reflexes are almost non-existent, and his reactions very slow. David and Lecario decide to stimulate him, to incite him to rediscover his vitality as soon as possible. When they finally see him leave, they feel a sense of pride. Each rhino saved is a victory over the poachers, as well as a personal triumph. For David and Lecario, protecting Liwa's wildlife means preserving this Maasai land inhabited as recently as a century ago by lions and rhinoceroses, a land where only the bravest of men dare to venture. Yeah.